Hey, all you happy people. Happy end of 2022. I know it's been a long time since I made a video, uh, but this demo version of Final Fight for the Mega Drive was basically uh, blew my mind so much I had to uh, come back online and make a video before the year was out. In fact, it's kind of inspired me. I think I might make some more videos in 2023. I might. And this is definitely just a might. I might even buy a green screen so I can stop using this uh, XSplit software to do a, a, a fake background removal. But no promises. As we uh, linger here on the opening cutscene, you can tell that uh, the dudes developing this game are uh, trying for uh, arcade quality. This, this cutscene is uh, just straight out of the arcade game. You'll notice she's sitting there in her, uh, looks like her, her lingerie, her bra. Uh, that scene was censored on the Super Nintendo version. And actually, even though it was censored in the Super Nintendo, it made sense because the opening scene of the game has her carted off wearing a red dress. So that makes a lot more sense. But anyway, uh, the Super Nintendo version of the game was much more heavily censored than that. One of the characters was missing, the gentleman in red here, Guy. Two levels were cut out and uh, the two-player mode was removed, and yada, yada, yada. It, it had a lot of cutbacks. I'm diving into the options menu here, because I just want to point out um, there's this thing here called F1 Power Mode, which lets you change the frame rate to increase the number of enemies on screen. I haven't noticed in the demo that this actually does anything. I've played through it a number of times, and I always feel like I see the same number of enemies. Uh, it seems to really more vary based upon uh, game level here. I'm going to leave it on hard just for a little bit of a challenge. But yeah, uh, however, it does look like their intention is to allow you to cut the frame rate to put more enemies on screen. And when they implement that fully, I think that's going to be an awesome option uh, because Final Fight's not a game that really needs 60 frames per second. So the more you can do to put more enemies on screen is just going to make the game that much more exciting. So let's just dive right into it, go into the one player mode. We've got the options of arcade, survivor, and time attack. Uh, those modes are taken straight out of the Sega CD version of the game. I'm going to pick arcade. We've got our options of guy, Cody, and hagger. Uh, let's go ahead and pick hagger here. Cody's my favorite character, but hagger is uh, easier to play, especially if you're making a video about the game. <laughs> Let's see, she's carted off in a red dress, so in that way the censored cutscene from the Super Nintendo made sense. That opening scene where he smashes the barrels was not in the Super Nintendo version of the game, but it was in the Sega CD version. I don't quite know how they source the assets for this game. Um, it doesn't feel like it's directly from the arcade, but it also doesn't feel like it's directly from the Sega CD either. So I think they've kind of done a melange where they've started with the Sega CD as a base and imported that into the Sega Genesis development kit and then kind of went to work with uh, arcade assets and Super Nintendo assets and kind of pick and chose what worked best um, and then cleaned up what they had um, because this, this is just a beast all its own and a great beast it is. It's colorful, uh, it's fast. It's actually a joy to play. If this version of the game had come out in 91 or 92, I guarantee you it would have been a system seller. Uh, Streets of Rage might have really uh, had its uh, competition. One thing I notice is the enemies are a little bit more aggressive than I'm used to. I don't know if that's because of the difficulty setting or if because it's the way they've programmed the game, but I'm not hating on it. I will say all of the differences that this game has over the original arcade version are welcome. Um, 
I'm so used to the arcade game so that anything that makes it a little more challenging is just a great change of pace for me. That said, um, this doesn't feel too much different from the arcade game. Like, it feels right. The controls are responsive. The moves come out when you want them to. Just everything about it feels polished. It's hard to believe that three or four people made this whole thing. I think it's awesome that the uh, development tools for the uh, Sega Genesis have come so far. It just goes to show how good of a job Sega did with the architecture of the Genesis back in the day. Like, they never un unlocked its full potential when it was uh, at retail, but people continue to do so years and years later. It's just awesome to see. I do like to utilize the trick of keeping people off screen and beating on them. It doesn't quite work as well in this version of Final Fight as it does in the uh, arcade game, the Super Nintendo, or basically any other version of the game, but it still works from time to time. Stage one tick down. Okay, these two enemies here, Axel and Slash, do you look at them and think to yourself, was Sega working, or was was Capcom working on a Fist of the North Star game back in the late 80s? Because I, I swear most of the enemies in this game are, are taken straight out of Fist of the North Star, but that's especially true of Axel and Slash here. wait to make a video about the final version of this game once it comes out. I'm playing it right now on a Mega SG, but I've played it using my EverDrive cartridge on an actual Sega Genesis, and it works just fine. Sounds great, looks great. One thing I would love to see is I'd love to see a company like Retrobit get in touch with these guys uh, and use their connections with Capcom to see if maybe an official version of this game can be published. Because I know Final Fight's got to be nearing its uh, 30 or 35th anniversary, much like Street Fighter is. And, uh, uh, you know, if you release the Super Nintendo version as a uh, anniversary object, people are going to riot. But if this version of the game completed was released as a, a special edition hey i dropped 60 bucks for it in a heartbeat throw that in a shiny awesome case you know give it a translucent red cartridge a foil label i'm there i'm here for it although i am curious to see how big this game's going to get right now it's at about three megabytes which is 24 megabits 
I do believe Sega Genesis games top out at either 32 or 40 megabits, um, which would be, if my math is right, 5 megabytes. It's going to be difficult to fit this whole game in that amount of space with uh, the uh, quality of the uh, assets that they've, they've put together. Like I said, this two-level demo already is 3 megabytes. But if they can manage it, and if this can fit on a traditional cartridge, oh man, I would love to have this as an actual retail product. Because I've always had huge nostalgia for Final Fight. Um, I enjoy playing it in the beat-em-up collections and the Capcom Arcade collection and everything. But there's just something about playing a 16-bit port and thinking, what could have been? Especially one that has a two-player mode like this. If this game had come out in 92, can you imagine? for my money there. I know it's not hygienic to eat food off the floor, but I think I'm going to have to eat that hamburger. I like how the uh, handholds on the subway are back, but I could have swore that he, the character was supposed to jump out of the front window of the subway when it stopped. I could be confusing this with another game. Though. One of the things that impresses me most about this port is how colorful it is. The Sega Genesis isn't necessarily known for having the widest color palette. And Capcom always used those rich blues and reds, which seem to be more apt to be reproduced on a Super Nintendo as opposed to a Genesis. So the fact that they've made this version of Final Fight so much more colorful is just amazing. thing I will say is uh, I do think I'm going to make some more videos in 2023. I don't know how much more prolific my out output's going to be. Uh, my intention is certainly not to become uh, a content creator or a podcaster or anything like that. Props to my buddies in the industry who've uh, made that their thing and have uh, profited from it. Uh, you guys are amazing. Um, but uh, between my professional life, my personal life, my health, and all of the other things that are going on, you're, you're not going to see a regular schedule of videos from me. But I, I think, you know, I do still have a few things to say, and, you know, it's nice on occasion to record a video. I do think, though, that 2023 is the year where I finally pick up a green screen and I stop using XSplit to, uh, make me a talking head in the corner of the screen. I mean, I think the least I can do is spend 80 bucks on a green screen. Lord knows I spend enough on Magic the Gathering and whatnot. And again, the way the economy is going, I spend a lot on everything. Don't we all? I mean, it's crazy how expensive things like food and clothing have gotten. So I think video games are so awesome. Yeah, they've gone up in price, but you can still get hundreds of hours of entertainment out of a video game. It's really necessary these days, as Sodom goes down pretty quick. That boss battle's pretty easy in this demo. Once they tighten him up, he'll just be he'll be as vicious as the arcade, I'm sure. It's 
especially when he starts doling out three times as much damage as he does now. I always loved this bonus stage in the arcade. Like, I know it's quicker to pick up the pipe, but I think it's awesome that Hagger with his bare hands can beat up a car. What an absolutely great demo. I can't believe they dropped this on Christmas Day. What an awesome present. Oh my god! That's just lovely. Uh, that's the end of the demo. I look forward to playing the full version of the game. I really hope this gets an official release in some capacity. So when this comes out in, in full, you'll definitely see me again, if not sooner. Until then, see ya!